All right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. We are here today with Caitlin Koski, our dear friend. She has been the wizard behind the curtain in both of our journeys, and so we are super excited to get to talk and, and get to hear about her journey and how she ended up in this world of magic and wonder. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for having me, you guys. I yes. do just feel so honored. We're super excited to have you. It's exciting. Yes. Peace. Exciting. Yeah. It feels full circle. It does. Like even to meeting you, I'm like, oh, I know you. Right. So right. well. Oh yeah. It's like the second the second you said anything, I was like, ah, oh, there's the place I know and love. <laughs> <laughs> We're all home. We are all home. <laughs> so for those listening, Caitlin is our body code practitioner. Um, I've been working with Caitlin since 21, I think. I think that's and then Chelsea, right in the beginning of 2022. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. And so, yeah. So, um, yeah, that's basically kind of our story. We always worked virtually, so just over the phone, not even camera. So we know we know each other's voices very well. <laughs> and so this is the first time we're actually meeting in person, although it feels like we've known each other for many, many, many years. Um, but what we would like to do today is just kind of give everybody an idea of what body code is okay. and who kind of benefits from that. I mean, obviously everybody does, but who right. is really ready for it? So yeah. um, before I throw too many questions at you <laughs> at one time, uh, do you mind just kind of sharing just how you got into body code? What yeah. was that story like? Well, let me take you back to the womb. <laughs> 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 like literally when I, because I've been praying and I've been meditating, I've been thinking about, you know, wow, how has my journey started? This has been a great reflection period when I knew I was going to come on. And one of the things that I like, I joke about the womb, but that's really accurate. Nice. You know, um, to take it back, I think to a really important period of my life of how I came into this work was actually when... Okay, I just need to, like, really back it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my mom and I almost died at birth. Mm -hmm. I had very, very low vital signs. She was flatlining. It was an emergency C-section. Life was a little wild. And my father was standing between me and my little bucket cage thing and my mom and said his first prayer oh. ever. Ooh. I know. And he said that in that moment, he believed in God because we both lived and we're all good. <laughs> And it was like, okay. And then my parents really decided to do a lot of things different from there. Um, we are like definitely outside of the conventional norm. Both of my sisters then were born at home successfully, happily. One of my sisters was even breech. I mean, it was a really cool birthing experience. And then my third sister was born. My, well, there's three of us total. So my youngest sister was born. And I was five and my, so my parents were then thinking about school and it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do? Cause now we have three daughters that came from the same two people and they are so different. Okay. And I'm not saying that we're geniuses, but I'm also not saying that we're slow, but we learn different. Mm -hmm. We're different beings. And so they were like, we're going to do things different. And so they started homeschooling us. And so from K through 12, we were homeschooled, all three of us. And it was a really exciting journey, but we've always done things different. And the other piece was spirituality, religion. Like, let's talk about it. It was such a big part of our world, but not really because we did a lot of church hopping when I was really young and realized that we didn't feel like it was like clicking. It wasn't the right spot. And so we did home church and we started inviting people into our home and we would go to other people's homes. And basically we would have like these amazing like Bible studies for lack of better term. Yeah. And so for my whole life, it's never been about religion. It's always about having a relationship with your creator. And that was really, really important growing up. Um, really fascinating actually growing up to really like, yes, get into the Bible and get into like the word, but then at the same time, like ask big questions. Like, well, why is that in there? And what does that mean? And what is the Old Testament? What was the New Testament? Like really, really big stuff. That was fine and dandy. It was very, like, it was educational, absolutely, and essential in a lot of ways. But the spiritual piece was the coolest part for me. Like, I lit up. And so we had somebody, another family had joined us that was also homeschooling and also more holistic-minded. And they knew a lot about um, 
the Messianic Christianity and like Hebrew Bible stuff, which was really fascinating. And there's there's a lot that has yet to be messed with by man in that, which is a little bit more prime. Um, and so they knew about spiritual gifts and they brought that into our work. And that's when things kind of were like, oh, spiritual gifts. And, you know, you can break it down into lots of different spiritual gifts, but um, really there's about 12. And we went through them and we took different like quizzes and tests like well, what are yours and the truth is that we have all of them within us all of the spiritual gifts with are within each of us as individuals which is very cool but we all have favorites too <laughs> like just like with anything like you might be athletic but you're gonna have a favorite sport mm -hmm. you're spiritual and you're gonna have a favorite spiritual gift mm -hmm. it's just how it works sounds like a cosmo quiz which spiritual gift do i you know have? <laughs> i mean it was like and it was kind of like still dial up internet at the time too so those quizzes weren't quite out yet <laughs> I but I totally would have been yes. looking them up if I had the opportunity. Um, but it was really clear that when we were going through this work that my spiritual gift that was my favorite was prophecy. And I thought it was the coolest thing, and it just made so much sense. And so this other family kind of took me under their wing and taught me about the gift of prophecy. And I did something called Theophostic Ministries, which was where they really taught you how to use the gifts that were within you, especially with pro prophetic healing and prophetic training, um, which was wild. Okay, I was like 11 years old, you guys. <laughs> I could not drive a car, and yet I was learning about my gift of prophecy. Wild. I know, and it was so cool. And I'm so grateful because I have parents who are like, this is really, like, unique, and we're going to support you. Like, mm -hmm. we'll take you to the appointments. Sure, you can do this, like, mm -hmm. if this is what you feel called to do. So what ended up happening as I was fostering this gift, between about the ages of 11 and, like, 15, um, I would start getting really, really powerful channeled messages for strangers that I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, that's not scary. No, it was, like, really cool. Um, we would be having lunch together as a family, and I'd be like, all right, um, I'll meet you guys in the car. I need to go deliver this message to this family. And I would deliver the message, have no context for what I was saying at all. I've never seen these people in my life. And it's kind of like I would wake up after talking to them, and they would just be bawling. And I'd be like, and you're so loved, and you're so blessed, and I, have, I hope you have a great day. And they'd be like, thank you so much. This happened multiple times throughout the course of my life. And it was wild. And my mom would always be like, are you okay? Like, that seemed like it was a lot. Like, she was always really respectful, but also wanted to make sure that I was okay because she's my mom and I love her for that. And it was like, yeah, I feel great. Like, I have no idea what happened. I feel great. <laughs> I blacked out, okay? But that was my first experience with what I would say, like, was a spiritual channeling. Mm -hmm. Now, in hindsight, I have a lot more information on what that means and what was happening, and I'm really grateful for that as well because if I didn't have language around it, it could have dipped into places that I wouldn't be happy being in. Um, so, you know, there's a lot behind the veil. Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of light behind the veil, too, but... There can be some darkness, and we don't have to be afraid of it, but it's important to be aware of it. Really important to be aware of it. Um, so then I became a teenager, and I was feisty and rebellious, and <laughs> I wanted to work, and I wanted to go to college, and I wanted to do all these things that kind of put all of that on the back burner. And um, when I was 23, I moved to Savannah, Georgia, which was so fun. I had not lived anywhere outside of the state of Ohio at the time, and it was a huge adventure for me huge adventure. Like life was so good. I lived at the beach. I had this awesome job where I was in fine dining. I would work from 5 to 10 p.m., make killer money, make friends, meet new people, meet celebrities. Like just all these like fun things were happening in my life. And then one day I couldn't get out of bed because everything caught up to me. And it was depression. It was really heavy depression. Like really bizarre and really heavy. And so I started therapy and that was wonderful. It was talk therapy. It was a new experience for me. I had done other types of more like holistic things. I mean, my dad's a chiropractor. My mom's way big in nutrition. Like I had used all these other modalities and pieces, but talk therapy wasn't something that had been on the table before because I didn't really know that I would be supported by it. You know, mm -hmm. if I would have known that I would have been supported by it before the depression, sure. But 
I didn't know. Um, and we don't know what we don't know. And isn't that great? Mm -hmm. So I started talk therapy and my talk therapist was wonderful. Oh my gosh, she was the sweetest. I actually still, you know, stay in kind of like a distant contact with her. She's wonderful. And she and I worked together really lovingly and really felt supported by her for a long time. Well, it wasn't that long actually because I was able to tell her exactly what was going on, what was happening for me. And finally there was one session and she said, Caitlin, I want you to go see my best friend. And I said, okay, like I was open. And so her best friend is one of the first body code practitioners in the United States to my awareness. And um, she had a waiting list. She was working with soldiers and working with lots of people with lots of trauma at the time. And so she had a long list. And so I called her and we talked and she said, yes, but I can't get you in until now or until th this timeline. And I remember thinking, that's a long time from now. Um, okay, sign me up. But then I had to wait. I actually called and canceled at one point because I was like, that's just so long and I don't even know what this is, <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> and then I rescheduled and I finally did show up. And she had, it was an in-person session, which is special um, to be able to work in person with a practitioner. And it was like a little shack in this like faraway town. It was like almost like a fairy tale <laughs> arriving at her place and just being like, okay, <laughs> my therapist told me to be here. So then she knows her. So let's try this out. So I go in and... I remember in the middle of a session being like, whoa, okay, this is going to be helpful. And then leaving and being like, oh, my light is back. The, there's a light also at the end of the tunnel that I've been in for many, many, many different reasons, but most of which that were that I was just running from myself for so long. So long. Oh um, and, and it was, it was, spirit and my purpose and what I'm here to do were not being utilized and something had to stop me in my tracks mm -hmm. because I would have just kept running. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't that I was trying to or that it was malicious in the moment, but I needed the redirection. Mm -hmm. And that was totally it. And she changed my life and we still have a beautiful relationship. And um, I really felt like this was it. And so my mom and I, our relationship had gotten really strained in the course of my late teenage years and early 20s. And I called her after that first session and I was like, Mom, I'm gonna be okay. And she started bawling, of course. I mean, it was like a whole thing because mm -hmm. we really didn't talk much at that season. And she was like, tell me all about it. She was like, honey. She calls me honey a lot, which is funny because now we have, I have a niece named Honey. So it's, we're, oh, we're changing our language recently here, but that's another story. She's the best. Um, she said, honey, tell me all about it. And these are the gifts that are already within you. And you can get back to your gifts. And I was like, I roll. No, I want somebody to do it for me. No, thank you. Like somebody else is going to be helping me with this, which was great. And, and she did. And then it was about a year and a half later, I was like, I think she's right like I'm still working this job and I'm still I had had a lot of other life experiences happen and actually um felt like it was time and then when it was time was also a season that Dr. Nelson was doing a live event in Nevada and my mom again being very supportive and like come on let's get you back to your gifts kind of cheerleading me yeah. was like let's go let's go I'll go with you and so we went and um, that was the first time that I had really utilized the art of muscle testing for other people. Now, I should also mention, muscle testing was not new to me. I had been muscle testing my whole life. We would go to holistic doctors and different chiropractors and different people that did muscle testing for holistic treatments as well as nutrition. So when we had a headache, it wasn't, here, take some ibuprofen, you're going to be okay. It was okay, let's ask your body what it needs through muscle testing. Let's get the answers. Here's some garlic. Here's some fresh air. Here's mm -hmm. a bath. And your body is doing what it's designed to do, which is to heal. That's how I was raised. But to be exposed to muscle testing in the sense of let's get into your deep subconscious mind and identify the emotions that are stuck there <laughs> was brand new and very cool. So to be able to go into this training with you know a good amount of personal work under my belt but also with this awareness that I'm gonna be connecting with new people was really exciting. Um, and I remember on the plane ride home, 
I like experimenting with myself. I'm totally my own guinea pig. Um, and I remember being like, okay. And I was prayerful. And I was like, God, if you want me to do this work, then I need to have a sign. And me and God have that kind of relationship where we just chat a lot. And sometimes it comes through my spirit guides, but it's ultimately always the creator. And I'm like, I had this word on my foot. And if I can release some trapped emotions and it falls off, then I'll do this work. It was a barter. I made a barter with God. And the wart fell off. And here I am. (laughs) Ta-da! Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Like, within, like, 24 hours, this thing that hadn't even bothered me, but I had just, I was literally on the plane ride home to Savannah from the training with Dr. Nelson. Saw it on my foot and just been like, hmm, well, if you want me to. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll need a little sign. And that was my little sign, which is hilarious. Never came back. Totally fine. And here we are today. So that's how it started. Now, I did body code work um, and stayed in the restaurant industry for a long time. And one of the other feelings around that for me was I feel that this work is so, so, so sacred. And for my journey personally, I was not to advertise. I was not to market myself. I was not to have social media about what this is about. I prefer a phone connection with a client because I feel like the the screen gets distracting and I feel like it takes away and I feel like there are moments that the ego blocks it from being really how pure it can be when it's just a phone call and I can be so deeply connected to the client's energy. Um, And so that's part of this whole experience as well was how do I build this business and um, that's kind of how it all transpired. So uh, the way that I get clients is through the ripple effect. And I really, really love it. And it was very clear to me that that was going to be successful. Um, and it was the best way for me to stay true to me. And I love, I have many, many clients now who have gone on to really market the work. And I'm like, yes, thank you for sharing that. Or, wow, you phrased that in a really beautiful way. And it's spreading truth about the work, which is really important. Um, but I've never once felt called to be like, I should start a social media page for this work because to me, that's just not my truth. Mm -hmm. And I've always had a deep, deep peace about it. Mm -hmm. So now I am full time in it and I come to Ohio for in-person sessions about every six weeks. And that gives me time to reconnect with my family and it gives me time to just reset. And for some people, they really, really, really love doing in-person sessions. And I always want to honor that. And so I had come back to Ohio for a small time and now I'm in Beaufort, South Carolina and Beaufort is my home. Mm -hmm. When I arrived there, I was like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Like it recharges me. It replenishes me. I get sad when I leave. Like I don't even, I'm in a season of my life where I'm like, this is vacation. I'm living on vacation. So when I think about taking other trips, I'm like, well, is it as great as Beaufort? <laughs> oh. So that's a good indicator for me. That's your right place. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, it's so fun. So can you please explain what muscle testing is? Yes. It's your body's response to something that's true or false to you. You only know your own truth. Even if it's not everybody else's, you only know your own truth. Um the sky is blue kind of thing, right? So when I'm teaching people to muscle test, we base that that teaching on what you already consciously know is true and then expand into what you didn't know you think is true. So an example for that would be, okay, I'm going to have you start muscle testing for yourself and I'll, and we'll ask your body questions that you know are true. My eyes are brown. My hair is brown. My name is blah, blah, blah. My, my birth date is blah, blah, blah. So you work in only the truths and then you expand it into a space that says, oh, I didn't know that I believe that I'm not good enough. Oh, I didn't know that I believe that I can't be successful. Right? So what you end up leaning into, that becomes this truth for your body, whether you want it to be or not. So muscle testing is very simple. Um, One of my favorite ways also when I'm encouraging people to learn how to muscle test for themselves is food. I love having people learn how to muscle test for food because it can change daily, first of all, but it can also remain the same. So muscle testing to see, do I need a banana today for breakfast or should I have some toast? It's a great way for your body to be like, oh, okay, that does serve my highest and best good. And I'm in the be- like the good, better, best realm for things. right? So when I ask questions with the client, I'm always asking for your highest and best good. You don't have to live by that standard. You're going to choose other things for yourself because, hello, we can't always be in our best, but it's the ideal goal. Mm -hmm. 
But the muscle testing, it can be done in many different um, forms as well. So okay. the main one is the sway test when people are starting. The sway test is when the body would lean forward into something while standing or fall gently back as that would be a negative for the body. Um, a lot of people will also use pendulums. Pendulums, as long as they're energetically charged to the person and the individual using them only, and it doesn't have any other energy interferences with the crystal that would be part of the pendulum, then it can be used as a good clean device. That was a lot of stipulation. You have to make sure that it's charged for you and that it doesn't have any other negative energy associated with it. How does one charge a crystal? Full moon, water, ask it, you know, the norm. <laughs> the normal weird you stuff. You just ask the crystal what it means. <laughs> uh, I remember the first time that we had, we were the first time we covered something that was a little bit weird, and you're like, okay, this is going to sound weird. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you are making a strong assumption that I have not already thought that about everything that's happening here. <laughs> making a strong assumption. It is weird, you guys. That's weird. the best thing about it. And yeah. I love leaning into my weird. I mean, yeah. what other 11-year-old has gone through prophetic training? Like, this is yeah, totally no. part of my truth. Absolutely. And I love bringing the, like, the veil of the weirdness off of it mm -hmm. because it is really, like, within all of us. Mm -hmm. Truly. Well, and I should say, obviously, obviously, everybody who, <laughs> anybody who listens knows that I, I see Caitlin, I, I do body code stuff. I mean, I'm not a practitioner. I receive the benefits of it. Um, I recommend it a lot for my patients, especially those who are experiencing chronic pain or chronic illness. Um, and I've seen massive, massive, insane benefits. At the same time, I still think it's weird, and I still don't get it. I don't, <laughs> it I don't know what's happening. It I don't know what's weird. going on. It totally so, is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, that was me. Um, pushing the table over here. Um, okay, so let me ask you this. Okay. You teach somebody how to muscle test, yes. right? Are they still seeing you for body code, great or are question. they taking care of all of their own stuff? Yes, because it seems like it's so question. hard to see it when you're in the crowd. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, and I have people ask me that often for many different, in many different ways and in different, like, perspectives. Um, if I'm teaching somebody to muscle test, I still encourage doing personal work with the practitioner or with somebody that they feel safe with because I do. So I, I might, like I said, my, I'm my own guinea pig. So what I know is that I can clear a lot of things to myself, but I can also get in my own way. Mm -hmm. And I can also feel like, man, that's heavy. I'd like some support. Mm -hmm. So I think it's super important that everybody feels empowered to their own gifts because, yes, they are within you. Mm -hmm. But if you need some support, hey, let me help you carry that. Mm -hmm. And let me shed some different light on it, too. I think that that's the important thing about this work is that it's because we only know our own truths. Sometimes we need that new perspective to shine in some things that can show us a new way. And it's a supportive way. You know, one of the other things about some of my own gifts is that I am so not judgmental like you do you mm -hmm. please you do you if that's what you want if these are your goals heck yeah mm -hmm. we're gonna align you with them mm -hmm. and if that's your truth and if that's for your highest and best good it's gonna happen mm -hmm. just like this like mm -hmm. us, us sitting here right now this was for everyone's highest and best good mm -hmm. and so here we are yeah we made it happen yes so then let me ask you this then because like a lot of what you're saying, it, it translates a lot into PT, yeah. where it's like I teach people a lot about how to move their body, how to interpret yeah, their it. body, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I'm like, hey, give yourself a month or so. If you yeah. need me, come back and right, we can right. go over more stuff. Because, like, I have, you know, the lots of years of experience here. <laughs> we don't need to number numbers. More, more years than my <laughs> mental math is willing to um, get on right now. Um and they only have the amount of time that they spent with me. Right. Where it's like you have had many years of experience with this. Mm -hmm. So is there, because it's like when you talk about like it's it's a yes or a no, it's a truth or, truth or a false. Like it's it, it just is what it is. Like, mm -hmm. And you said this to me, I'm like, I have asked you many times, how did you know this? You're like, I didn't. Your body told me. Like yeah. your body just told your me. Your body communicates well. So my question is this. When, like with regards to body code practitioners, is there... Is it like it doesn't matter who you go to because you're still getting a yes or a no? Yeah. Or is there an art in, like, the types of questions that you're asking? Or, like, <sighs> explain this to me. <laughs> I my, could take this one in, like, a million different directions. Brain still just explodes every time. So your 
your relationship with your practitioner or who you're working with is unique to you too. Um, I have just in full transparency worked with other people that I'm like, okay, that was nice. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably never work with them again unless for whatever reason, God has a sense of humor Mm -hmm. and it wraps back around to that person. Um, So our relationship with our practitioner is really important. However, um, the way that each practitioner takes it is also different. You know, I know some practitioners really incorporate Reiki. Some people really incorporate breath work. Some people really incorporate chiropractic care, um, PT. Lots of different things go into this work. And we all have a history, too. So the practitioner that's showing up to the call has had their own life as well and will do things and ask things in a unique way. Um, So I... The roundabout answer for that one really is that you're going to need to just choose who you align with. Mm -hmm. Who do you feel safe with, too? Mm -hmm. I mean, we're working with people who've been through deep, deep, intense trauma 99.9% of the time. I don't know anybody who hasn't experienced some type of trauma. Mm -hmm. And so when I ask if I can connect with somebody subconscious... That's a deep question for me. That's why I felt the best in this modality. Mm -hmm. Because... I felt safe feeling like somebody was asking for my permission. And this is not a slight to any other modality, but not all of them do ask for permission. Mm -hmm. And that to me is a big deal. Mm -hmm. I would never want somebody walking into my home without me inviting them in. Exactly. This is the same thing. Yep. In Mm -hmm. like in a more intense way. Mm -hmm. Like you're going to tap into things that I didn't know about me. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. You you better make sure I feel safe on the outside. Mm -hmm. And even though it is weird and it takes time to build that relationship, it's still, we get vibes from people, Mm -hmm. right? So Mm -hmm. yes, you took like a leap to say, okay, I'm going to do this for me. And... We had a great connection right away. We did. Just in conversation. We did. Well, and I wasn't really doing it for me. I was like, I don't really care about me. I'm trying to figure out how do I explain this to my patients, you know? Yeah. Like, how do I describe you're to your people? You're your guinea pig. I wasn't. Of course. Of course we are. It. I feel like any good practitioner is. I don't know. I don't know if this is going to be any good, but I sure as heck am not going to have somebody else do it first on my recommendation. Exactly. So let's figure this out. But yeah, it was 100% mm-hmm. like... Listen, I've seen crazy stuff happen before. Yeah. I have had patients who are doing everything I ask them to do, and they're doing stuff that I know works. Right. Stuff that I have seen work on multiple occasions, stuff that have mm-hmm. that I know for a fact works, and I know they're doing it because they can show me that they're doing it. Right. And we're still not making the progress we should be making. And so, and then they'll go oh. and they'll do some weird thing, <laughs> right, <laughs> where they would come back and they would tell me what they did, and I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, that's not a thing. That's, I don't know what you did, but that's not a thing. Cleared a block. And it did. And I will feel their body. And Mm -hmm. all of a sudden, all of the symptoms are gone. Their tissues feel pristine. Everything is like they never had a problem. And I'm like, okay, well, arrogant Allison. There is other stuff going on that you can't see. And that's where I, you know, I had been earlier in my career. And that's why when we met, I was like, listen, I don't get it. But I'm open to the fact that there's stuff that I don't get. And so when you were like, well, let's just do a session. I'm like... Sure. Like, whatever. And then when you're like, are you okay if I connect to your energy? I'm like, knock yourself out. (laughs) Whatever that means. I'm, like, just sitting here chilling, like, looking at my numbers on my computer for, like, what's the schedule look like? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Knock yourself out. Check my energy. And then you're like, what happened when you were nine? I'm like, I'm so Mm -hmm. sorry. What? What now? You're like, I'm just getting something big that happened when you were nine, you know? Terror, fear, and lack of control, and blah, Mm -hmm. blah. And that's when we discovered the car accident and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? What is happening right now? I'm like, how did you know that? Your body told me. I was like, this is crazy. This is, I'm in the crazy right now. I'm in the crazy weird. Welcome to the crazy. And I didn't turn back from there. No. Because you knew it worked. Yeah. (laughs) I did. And that's why I was like, it was so... It was, it was a very incredible experience, and I've told this story a million times, so apologies for the repetition for those who have already heard it, but the entire call, I still thought, wow, she's really nice, but she's also insane, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. And then you were like, okay, we're going to go ahead and clear this energy. I'm like, sure, again, <laughs> super nice, Knock would love to go out for drinks sometimes, yeah. <laughs> but like, this is weird. And then the next day, I like was in a depression, mm. and I was just like what is happening Mm. and it was scary and it was heavy and I didn't like because I've worked with patients who have been depressed and they're like yeah just kind of like I was fine one day and I wasn't the next and it was that way for months and years and it's just Mm. it scared the crap out of me and then 
And it, it still in that moment did not occur to me. <laughs> that it was processing, period. Not even the remote oh, thought of my mind. Yeah, like not a remote thought in my mind that this could have ever been anything that was real. Right. And then when I woke up the day after my processing was complete and I felt like Cinderella mm-hmm. with like the sun shining down and the animals dressing me and I'm like, it's a beautiful day and the sky is blue. And I was like, I sent you a message. I was like, what was that? And you were like, yeah, you did. the processing period. I told you this. Like, like we, we talked about this. And I was like, know. I did not know that this. I was like, so you said two weeks then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and, and get that were, next one scheduled. Back. And I was back. <laughs> and I haven't stopped since. Yeah. You and I process very similar, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. We process pretty hard. Yeah. Like I that. don't plan things during processing period anymore. Like, I won't do, we won't do podcast episodes when I'm processing because mm. I'm just like, I, I can't get into that. Crunchy. Yeah. And I get, <laughs> um, remember the one in December when mm. I was like, got that super insecure. Yep. I was like, oh, I'm a 15 year old kid again. What's happening here? It was horrible. Yeah. And then I, processing was done and I was like, oh, oh well, that's what that was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not everybody has that in all fairness, mm-hmm. but, um, you and I both, and I, I just warn my my partner. I'm like, I'm PMSing, but it's really just processing. processing. <laughs> it's just processing. It's better for me to describe it in that light for him, so he can be like, Oh yeah, okay. Got it. Does he do Grouchy. a body count also? Oh, no, yeah. does he? Okay. And I'm teaching him how to muscle test. Nice. And, so he understands yeah. the woo. Only now. Oh. Only in the okay. last few years, and he's so supportive. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh, he's so sweet. And he's mu- he does music lessons, right? Yeah. yeah. He's an opera singer, which is wow. so cool, right? Yeah, super cool. That's I so love cool. everybody's. I love people. People. That's are the, my favorite thing about this work is like meeting people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and that was actually going to be one of my questions. So, okay. Anybody who's listening to this and they're like, "This sounds super weird." Yeah. But also, I'm kind of open to be being learning about some weird stuff here because I've mm-hmm. seen weird things happen in my life as well that have no business having mm-hmm. occurred yet they did occur. Mm-hmm. What kind of person, despite the fact that, like, yes, of course, everybody would benefit from Mm -hmm. knowing themselves better and being able to, like, clear out the crap that we carry with us that we don't even need and the crap that we're picking up from other people that they didn't even know they put on us and we didn't know they put on us, what kind of person benefits from this type of work? Truly everybody. Yeah. But you have to be willing to be on the call and kind of face yourself. And I do think that that takes a readiness that isn't something that everybody carries. Um, and I lovingly refer to the people that aren't ready just as being asleep, mm-hmm. right? That they're still doing their best, that they're still living as much of their truth as they can access, but they're living with a lot of false belief as well about what they can do and what they're capable of doing. Um, my youngest clients are in the womb, which really is so fun. It gives me chills even saying that out loud. Meeting That's the crazy. baby before they're born and come earthside and have their life experience is so cool. That's so cool. I love getting the pick from the mama of this beautiful little baby. And they'll be like, they're exactly like you described them. (laughs) And demeanor and energy really is, it's being formed in the womb just like the fingernails. What would that look like? Like what kind of, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) Again. You're you're, you're clicking on my weirdo meter of like, what's happening? Well, it's off the charts. It's okay. Yeah. Talk to me about, like, what, what has, like, a, a client call been like in that type of scenario? In that type of scenario. Like, why would the mom reach out to you? Yeah. What's going well, on? One time, she didn't even know she was pregnant yet. That's happened actually multiple times. that They didn't know that they were pregnant yet. Oh, so you I'd, were like, hey, I'm getting two souls like, here. <laughs> yeah, like, this ener- the, it's so strong that it would come through additionally. And I'd be like, are, are you sure? Are, do you think you could be pregnant? And the, w- there was one time it stands out so loud that she's like, no, there's no way. And she texted me two weeks later and she was like, okay, seriously, how did you know? <laughs> but that's the energy just coming forward. Um, and for the other clients that are like actively cooking in the womb, um, they just have their own experiences of being a part of their mother's life um, already. And some of their own spiritual experiences that are happening for them as they're downloading into the physical form. So is it possible then that the baby can come into the world with trauma already if mom's in a dangerous environment? Even if she's in a safe environment. Because not every day is perfect. And if mom's emotions are intense enough or she has an appointment where, let's say she has a doctor's appointment for the baby and she's feeling nervous going in, baby's going to feel that. 
I've actually never been pregnant myself. And um, so when I connect with women that are or are trying or have been, it's always like a different experience for me um, because I can feel that duality because I'm so used to being in my own oneness. <laughs> my, it's just been just me here. here. Just <laughs> yeah. me over here. Right. So that kind of, I can feel that in a unique way. Okay. So, okay. See the wheels are turning. I love it. There's um, smoke <laughs> coming out of the ears. <laughs> oh, man. You need to have a drink after this one. Um, so, okay. Hmm. Do you work with people in the womb? Yeah. Okay, good. I know. It's like my, my brain is reloading. Just yeah. It needs a second here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, okay. okay, so then when you work with people, like, do you work with people who, like, deal with infertility? Yes. Okay, what kind of, is there, like, a common thing that you're finding in that? Like, a common yes. emotion or trapped region? Everybody really is different in that, but usually it's belief system, and it's usually fear as well, that, like, their body isn't capable, that there's something wrong with them, that they haven't um, done something correctly. Um, also... You know, the medical field, when they diagnose something, it becomes a badge. Mm -hmm. And when that person is wearing that badge, it's really hard to say, I think we can set that badge down now. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think that that one's serving you for becoming a mother, if that's Mm -hmm. what you're desiring. So, yes, yeah. Are you able to work with people and then they can get pregnant after yeah, that once you release that, that kind of stuff? many times, yeah. And sometimes they'll still go through IVF treatments or they'll go through other types of treatment, work with a fertility specialist. My biggest recommendation in a partnership, like if somebody is wanting to become pregnant and is having trouble, is body code and acupuncture. That's like the magic sauce. Really, really, really powerful things happen when acupuncture because in acupuncture in Chinese medicine they work on the meridians the meridians are basically the energy version of your circulatory system so you have blood run throughout your whole body you have energy run throughout your whole body as well Mm -hmm. and the acupuncturist will be able to specialize in making sure that each organ and gland is cleansed and ready um, and that it balances things out in a way that really works so Mm -hmm. well with body code that's really interesting because I know, like, if you're working with an acupuncturist, you want somebody who's worked specifically in infertility, right? Like, that's kind of like a specialty subset of it can acupuncture. Be, yes. Okay. It doesn't have to be their specialty, though, if they're doing other things. Okay. Okay. So, with regards back to the infertility situation mm-hmm. here, with regards to that, are you finding, like, a specific location within the body that things are typically trapped like is it typically trapped in the uterus or is it usually more of like a hormonal type of situation it's literally different for every single person i'm like my, i'm i'm filing through all my files and mm-hmm. i'm like it's so different for each person gotcha because of the belief systems right yeah. because if you go back into that just basic what is true for you what is false for you mm-hmm. that can be down to a cellular level that can go into generational levels that can go into so many different avenues mm-hmm. that it's so unique for each person it would be hard to group that one into just one ball. So how do you feel towards the, the like, perceived, like, genetic, tr- like, um, like this was passed down genetically? Like, do you feel like it it is actually, like, the genetics of the body, or do you believe it's the beliefs that have been passed down that are setting the genetics in place? Or? So if you break it down to genetics or energy as well. Okay. So let's just take it right there. <laughs> Like, so it would be a generational energy, not a genetic diagnosis. Um, And so when you can immediately, like, there's a repression or a limiting belief just in believing that, oh, these are my genetics. Like, I'm stuck like this. I'm stuck like this is a limiting belief. Because science says that this is Right, and I believe that science has a really, really important role, and we should honor some of the information, but claiming it as a fact makes it a belief. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> no, and I see that. I see that so I bet much you in the really clinic. Do. Oh my yeah. gosh, people who come in who are like, "Well, I have degenerative disc disease," like yeah. in their back. That's the biggest that. one. Yep. And it's like, yeah, but you also have been having back pain for three weeks, and you had degenerative disc probably for a decade. Mm-hmm. So let's just calm down on just like wearing that as like a "This is how I'm going to be the from white now on." Coat diagnosis mm-hmm. is yeah. really intense. Yeah, the the the, the diagnosis mm-hmm. I struggle with that a lot. When I have clients getting ready to go for a doctor's appointment of any kind. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad and honored when they share that, and I always know that it's for me to share this with them. Mm -hmm. Go collect the information Mm -hmm. and don't wear wear any of it like it's yours yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Collect the information, have the conversation, but don't wear it. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I feel like that a lot. I, I'll have patients who all have like people who will call and be like, "Well, do you treat this or do you treat mm-hmm. that or do you mm-hmm. treat whatever?" Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, but at the end of the day. It doesn't matter really right. if you have this pelvic diagnosis, that pelvic diagnosis, or that pelvic diagnosis, because at the end of the day, it's your nervous system's out of whack. We've got belief systems that are causing the nervous system to be out of whack. We have a musculoskeletal response mm-hmm. to this. Mm-hmm. So you're experiencing pain in whatever organ system you're experiencing pain in. Yes. And the medical side can help. Mm-hmm. with the band-aids right. while we get this whole system back online. So can I just point something out, though? Yeah. Like, you just broke down the energy. I you just, just it, like, You kept it, it one, at one place, and it could go even deeper than that, but you broke down the energy just then. You said, okay, I see where this is what you've been believing, mm-hmm. but this is just energy. Yeah. This is your pelvis. Your pelvis is energy. Right. You did that. Well, look like, at you, know, you guys. Go. Just let me grow. You know. <laughs> let her work. Let her live. <laughs> With a hair flip. Yes. Well, that's probably why a lot of my patients are willing to go to body code. Yeah, then, that makes sense. Because it's like that time. If I'm that's how well, I'm describing have, the symptoms. Yeah, definitely, you created the safe space for them to understand themselves. People are always just looking for answers. Just raise my hand in the corner again. <laughs> yeah. They're just looking for answers. They want a solution for what is wrong with me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I think the hard thing is, is I think that it is very easy in a Western medical society to hear, this is what's wrong with me, and then I take this pill, or I do this stretch, mm-hmm. or I mm-hmm. do this whatever, have the surgery, mm-hmm. and then now this will no longer be wrong with me. Right. It is a lot scarier to hear... What's wrong with me is that I believe that I can never let somebody down. Right. And therefore, I am living every day of my life to be perfect. And therefore, I'm kicking my cortisol into overdrive Mm -hmm. because I am so stressed out about messing up. Because if I mess up, then who's going to do it for me? Mm -hmm. Or who's going to do it for my family? Who's going to do it if I don't? And then, now that cortisol is robbing our progesterone and estrogen, and Mm -hmm. now our organs aren't working very well. Mm -hmm. And then now our muscles are tightening up because we don't have the proper nutrients that go to the muscles or we don't have the proper nutrients to go to our body to help us. And then now we're in physical pain. But we still have the belief of I can't let people down. So we push through the pain so that we can keep doing the stuff. And then we keep spiraling. It's a lot harder to hear that. (laughs) Full circle. It's a lot harder to hear that for people. Yeah. But we're really in a season where more people are waking up. Mm -hmm. And they are willing and able to hear, oh, wait. Maybe it isn't just the magic pill that's going to save me this time. And I... It's because it's already within you to save yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. hello, exactly. healing. But, you know, people don't, the Western medical system doesn't make money off of you healing yourself. That's true. They That's make true. money off of us being dependent on them to give us answers. Yes. And they're so. there for a reason, and I do really yeah. honor that. Oh, yeah. And then I raise my vibration above it because I can't hang out in, in that yeah. space. Yeah. Well, it's like, I'm not going to lie. Like, if I have somebody who's coming to see me, they're a postpartum mom, let's say, yeah. and they are experiencing um, vaginal atrophy mm-hmm. because of all the hormonal cascading and all right. the other stuff they go have going on, 100% I'm recommending they follow up with their doctor about a topical estrogen. Yes. 100%. Right. That is a, a science-based medicine that is going to be helpful in this scenario. Do I think they're going to be on topical estrogen the rest of their life? Probably not. Mm-hmm. But in this moment, in order for us let's to tolerate sure the, the treatments that you're going to need, yeah, let's get you some support because we've got a long road ahead of us, right. you know? Yeah. If I've got somebody who's coming in and they've got, you know, vulvodynia or something like that, mm-hmm. then, yeah, we're going to talk to the doctor about medications that are going to help your pain levels right. so that you can tolerate the movements that we are trying to use to break you out of these pain cycles within mm-hmm. the body. Mm-hmm. But then the goal is, is now once we are moving and we're feeling better, we're going to start weaning those off as the doctor allows. Right. That is safely, that is, that is a safe weaning process from a medical standpoint so that your body doesn't go into withdraw and like start to rebound. Yeah. And at the same time, we're going to be working with counts like mental health professionals, body yeah. co-professionals, chiropractors, whoever mm-hmm. else it is that we need to work on this entire system here. Exactly. And so I have no problem with the medical system when you have good practitioners who recognize their role mm-hmm. and they want to like 
let's do the damage control, mm-hmm. but let's all collaborate together to help this person get truly well. Right. Because I'm not sitting here thinking that I'm going to fix everything that they have going on. I'm not prescribing them medication. I'm not doing body code on them, mm-hmm. you know. But I recognize my role that my role is to help them to feel what's happening within their body again. Exactly. To start to have control over what's happening and how their body's responding to things from a musculoskeletal standpoint. Mm -hmm. And how can we use movement or touch in order to modulate those nervous system signals so that they can keep moving while all those deep-seated background noise and thoughts. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's powerful. It's a process. It is. You know, I think one of the reasons why I know that people are waking up more is Mm -hmm. because I have a lot of clients right now Mm -hmm. that are doctors Mm -hmm. in the medical field a lot and scientists like how cool is that super cool Mm -hmm. so not just for you know one specific area multiples Mm -hmm. and dentists and these people that are like they were taught in medical school Mm -hmm. about the science of the body and all the electrons and all the atoms and all the energy that we cannot physically see, mm-hmm. and yet it's very real. Very real. Mm-hmm. Very real. That's how I start. When I describe it to my patients about, like, what is going on, mm-hmm. I always tell them, like, first of all, we know, scientifically proven, we know we have electricity in our body, yeah. right? We've got mm-hmm. all the E's. We've got the EMGs and the EKGs mm-hmm. and the EEGs. Did I cover them all? My nurse friend, all the E's? Okay. Um, So we've got all of those, right? So we know. People are like, oh, yeah, I've I've had those done or I've seen those done. I know that those exist, right? Right. That's that's indisputable. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, that energy, that the, that flowing of electricity through our body can, right. like, permeate mm-hmm. from our body. It doesn't can. It's not can permeate. It does permeate it from does. our body. And we can tell that when you go and you, you meet somebody and you're like, ooh, I think I don't ever want to see that person again, right? Or, oh. ooh, I think, like, I don't know what happened in this room, but, like, I don't think I want to linger. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's Mm -hmm. walked into that room where nothing was said and you know something weird just happened. Mm -hmm. And you get the heck out of Dodge, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like people are like, oh, yeah, I have had that experience before. And I'm like, okay. So that is you picking up on other people's aura or energy that's kind of been left behind in there or whatever the case is. Vibes are off. The vibes Mm -hmm. are off and it is having then an effect on your system. Yeah. And now you are internalizing that potentially. Right. What our goal is is that when we have some sort of strong experience or even the moderate experiences, the body can hold on to that and it can just hide it away in whatever little area of your body it wants to hide it. Mm -hmm. And we don't necessarily know that. I don't know that. I don't know that. I'm like, that's what the body code people know. That's what (laughs) they can help you find, right? Like, just like you didn't know that you were clenching your pelvic floor when I said try to relax and you said Mm -hmm. I did, and I'm like, "Mm, that was a really great attempt. Maybe let's try again to actually relax. I can help you tune into the fact that that is holding on to tension. Mm-hmm. I can't tune. I can't tune into the fact. I don't have the skill level right now to say, "Oh, you're holding on to a trauma from when you were 12 years old in your pineal gland." <laughs> I don't know how to do that, right? That's not my area of expertise. But you guys have that area of expertise where you can help if that is where their body is holding on to something to be able to sense that and to be able to or read that from their body or, you know, do your magic wizardry stuff and <laughs> clear it I all love out. when she starts the spiral of like, it's weird. It's weird that I don't know what's happening, <laughs> but weird. it works. And then all of a sudden it kind of just like opens up the floodgates of the cascading of events of things to occur. Right. I'm like, it's like there's, you've got dams in your body at all these places and it's Shrek like had it right <laughs> we are an onion, an onion. everybody yes. likes a parfait right. and nobody like <laughs> everybody likes Those a parfait layers, you guys. <laughs> ogres are onions we have layers <laughs> Oh, it's a Friday it, right? night, and we are doing movie night tonight with the kids, and we might have to pull out Shrek for tonight. You're welcome. You might yeah. have to be the thing. Yeah. I love Shrek. It's a classic. Although, I'll tell you what, like, when you watch Shrek as an adult, it's like, yep, Mike Myers was definitely involved in this, because oh, yeah. there's oh, a yeah. lot, there's a lot there uh-huh. that is not super obvious when you're a kid, and as an adult, you're like... That's a great movie, oh. though, because it's geared towards still being okay for children to see, mm-hmm. and the Adults can be laughing and yeah. being like, this mm-hmm. is 
Oh, I've got like just reel after reel playing in my head right now that I'm just going to sit here and giggle the whole rest of the time. Shrek mode. Like, Chelsea, you you hang out. You guys do your thing. I'm just going to sit here and watch Shrek in my brain right now, laughing at Lork Farquaad. Oh, yeah. That's a great character. Oh, my gosh. John Lithgow voiced him, right? I think so. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Which is so funny because... Okay, Ryan always thinks I'm crazy because I know so much about, like, actors and actresses and mm-hmm. stuff like that. He's like, how do you know this? Because he doesn't remember names. I'm like, how do you know who won the Stanley Cup in 1994? Oh. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. people just hold on to whatever things they hold Hello, on to. Hello, memory fields. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And I Here's think, the subconscious in action. There it is. Yeah. And I was like, when I found out, because I'm fairly confident he's what I'm thinking about, but he was, like, all dramatic. Like, did all drama first until he did Third Rock from the Sun, where he was, like, mm-hmm. you know, the leader. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it was, like, total Central. comedy. And then he was one of the serial killers in Dexter. And I was oh, like, really? and that was a I season that. that I had to stop watching because it was like super messed up. And I was like, like and we're done here. Quad. I know. A killer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, what a journey he's been on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Okay. My mind is bending over here, but I appreciate that. Chelsea, I see a list of questions, girl. I do have a question. So, okay. with my own journey, yeah. right, when I came to you, I was post-hysterectomy. I had already started working with Allison. Mm-hmm. She referred me for sweating. That was the initial <laughs> initial situation, right? That's where we started. That's where we started. And very God, quickly. I do remember that now. I was like, you're yeah, real sweaty. Sweats. Yeah. You're real sweaty. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, she was like, we had night more sweats. And she's like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little something. <laughs> they were just in there, so we're pretty sure it's not cancer. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know oh why you're sweating so bad. Uh-huh. Yeah. And I saw it over so we were like, mm, yeah, unsure. Maybe yeah. try this. Mm-hmm. And uh, very quickly, you were able to tap into a lot of generational trauma mm-hmm. within my reproductive system, mm-hmm. which is where, you know, everything had been focused. So I'm curious if you have seen that as a pattern within your own work, if you've seen that people have really intense um, physical ailments, physical illnesses, mm-hmm. that there is a generational piece to it mm-hmm. most of the time, or if it kind of hit or miss or what you've seen. Yeah, that's a great question too. So. Yes, generational energy is definitely something that I see coming from a physical trauma standpoint and just gets passed down, right? Um, Just like you can take it to a really, really serious space. And outside of session, I'm such a goof, you guys. This is a funny thing about me. that Mm -hmm. I don't know that you know this about me, but like you can also take it to a really not so serious space. Mm -hmm. Like generationally, most families have a team, like, oh, we, we're a Celtic family, you know, like, mm-hmm. we're going to root for the Dolphins. I don't know about sports at all, but that's what came to mind. <laughs> and so, like, everybody has kind of this, this thing where, well, you were born into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, trauma is the same thing. Mm-hmm. You can be born into it. So, actually, in my own personal work, when I started, and some generational energy would come up, and in my personal work, I've been back 16 generations plus in my personal work and you know it's like bigger than ancestry.com yeah really deep stuff and I remember in session again I was going in person with my practitioner at the time and being like this is so boring I don't care about my ancestors can we please work on me and being like kind of snobby about it Mm -hmm. but you know it was my moment and that's what I wanted I wanted my moment and so I was like I don't care I don't know about what was happening 16 generations ago or really even like four more like did not interest me at all. Those are some of my most profound sessions. I would feel so significantly different afterward, so mm-hmm. much lighter, freer, happier, significantly so after mm-hmm. processing time that I was like, oh, crap, that is legit. <laughs> we might have to do a session then um, specifically On for our, uh, yes, and specifically for our youngest because mm-hmm. when we did 23 and Me, they have these things called like haplogroups where it's like you're the, they trace the gene all the way back to, like, the original, like, group of Ooh, genes. Okay. Um, and then it's like, oh, who else? Like, what famous person was also in this haplogroup? group? So oh, you're not, like, a direct descendant of them, but you right. have a common descendant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so I don't know my paternal haplogroup group because none of the males in my family have done this. So I only oh. have, like, the X chromosome. Okay. Um, but our X chromosome is the same haplogroup group as... Um, I don't know if you're into, like, anthropology at all. I watch a lot of, like, Discovery Channel, History Channel type mm-hmm. stuff. Um, if I could be anything else in the world, it would be anthropology. I think cultures are really, really cool. That is cool. Um, and there was this 
this like Viking leader that they had found this gravesite for. It's like a pristine gravesite, and it was like buried with like you know horses and and dice, which I guess were only for like military leaders and mm. all these things and you know all this stuff. They're like this must have been a really really high high up person within the Viking military, whatever. Wow. Um, many many years later, as they learned more about skeletal anatomy and you know mm. differences between sexes as far as you know pelvises go, they're like, oh, this is a woman. This person that we thought Whoa, was a woman. That's and so so cool. it was super, super cool. So, and I remember when being younger and watching, um, like Discovery Channel, like episodes on this, mm-hmm. like Viking leader who ended up being a woman, and it changed the entire idea of what we knew about Vikings mm-hmm. and all this kind of stuff. That's so awesome. And that Viking leader is part of our ex Haplogroup. group. Cool. And so sometimes when our youngest is being particularly strong-willed, mm-hmm. we'll call it. <laughs> Um, we would call her Freya, <laughs> just like her own little Viking leader name. There you go. Um, yeah, so I was like, oh, this would be interesting because I, I have we have no idea if we're like a direct descendant mm-hmm. or right, right. whatever. But well, and it'd even be if it wasn't direct, that energy would still be, mm-hmm. you know, part of the loop somewhere. That's so crazy. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, that was that was really something that we should work on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be, be interesting. Fun. Mm-hmm. That'd be super interesting. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> I know also, so within my journey, Allison has kind of been able to pinpoint that, like, my healing, my physical healing, really took a jump forward, a leap forward, if you will, catapulted me when I started practicing the body code Hmm. myself, when I started learning the actual work, right? Mm -hmm. So is there anything behind the scenes there that you have seen or noticed that like how that happens well yes because that's you stepping into your power it's you stepping into just your truth and knowing like i don't have to rely on somebody else to do this for me all the time Mm -hmm. i can do this for me so yeah that makes so much sense total sense in knowing that you've just been able to get to know you right which is going to also support your physical body Mm -hmm. your emotional body your spiritual connection right how you connect to other people you know, that's the other really cool thing about this work. I've seen entire family energies healed mm-hmm. by one person doing the work. It's mm-hmm. even better when more people can do the work. But, yeah, just by one. It's incredible. Yeah. Do you have a lot of clients who go forward to do this for others? Yes. Yes, and I think it's so important. If there's even an inkling, whether it be in their energy body for what their subconscious is saying or they verbally expressed it to me in a session, I'm like, do it. Do it, please. There are 8 billion people in this world. Mm -hmm. We all need support. And you can choose the best version of yourself. And you can support other people in supporting their best versions, too. Like, I am a firm believer that we're all here to win. I love that. And it's not a participation trophy. It's you doing Mm -hmm. the work. Mm-hmm. And you can do it. I think the really cool thing about it is that, like, as you start kind of clearing away all the junk that's been kind of clouding your vision, yeah. and you can start to see kind of, like, what it, what your path is more clearly, mm-hmm. it helps you step outside of what you've been told your whole life your path should be, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. And it's like, it now you can up. start finding so much joy without the nice cars or the big houses or the fancy vacations or the millions of friends. You can have a really close knit group of people that are super fulfilling in your life. You can have, you know, you can live without that, that scarcity of not making enough, or you can live Mm -hmm. without that scarcity of, you know, I'm not being a good enough parent or I'm not healthy enough or I'll never be, you know, Mm -hmm. all of those exclusives that a lot of people live in. I I always, or I never, you know, Mm -hmm. you can start putting those down. I always, and I never are great ways to pinpoint a limiting belief. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, ding! Mm -hmm. Because that's, okay, if that's true and it's serving your highest good, then it's going to serve your highest good. Mm -hmm. And if it's not working for you, it's pretty quickly something we would want to look at. Yeah. Like, I feel like the only way that I will use, like, I always is, will be like, I will always try to be flexible. Yeah. You know, like that's the only one that I'm like willing to kind of commit to anymore. Because <laughs> I used to say like, yeah, I will always be doing this, mm-hmm. you know, even if it's like a something that I think is helpful, you right, know, even right, if it's right. like I will, I will always have yoga as a part of my life, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes yoga falls to the wayside for like two or three months, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. and and I, I miss it. And I'm like, oh, now I need to get back to it. And I needed to miss it in order to get back to it and get what I needed out mm-hmm. of it, you know? Yeah. So I feel like always and never are, like you said, very good ways to find those those limiting beliefs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think language is so important, especially. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 
what we call ourselves too. So that's a huge one actually that in the conscious part of the body code sessions, um, you know, people will say my anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's a common one. Okay. Pause. I want you to take a deep breath with me and I want you to remind yourself that it's not yours if you don't want it. (laughs) Don't call it mine. That's huge. It's one of the most profound conscious repatternings that we can do for ourselves is to stop claiming things that we don't want ours over ourselves. Yeah. That's really interesting because yeah, because there is this almost like, like escapism from responsibility to it. Well, it's easy to place the blame then. Yeah. Like, oh, well it's just my anxiety. Yeah. Well, is it? Uh Uh-huh. I bet there's a little something else to that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. 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 That's a really oh, yeah. good one. Even we've done that even with like with my financials. Mm-hmm. As you've mentored me as I've like done this journey, really mm-hmm. even like the debt versus mm-hmm. my debt. Yes. Mm-hmm. Having it be very specific. Mm-hmm. It's not something you don't want, don't claim it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like that. Well, that leads me into my my last question for today. Okay. Um, what is let's say somebody is like, you know what, I'm not ready to necessarily go into a body code session. Yeah. But I am interested in, like, how to be a little bit more aware of, like, what is going on with myself. What is, like, one takeaway somebody could do today Mm -hmm. to start kind of being a little bit more in tune with themselves to kind of get them to that point where they feel like, you know, there is more to this than just what I've been told? Yeah. My mind is racing. Like, there's a lot of different suggestions. And really, depending on where somebody is in their life, that mm-hmm. would be different. But I would say, actually, the the language piece, I would mm-hmm. start there. Mm-hmm. Ask, like, notice what you're claiming over yourself. That's a great way to start. Physical pain or imbalances in the body are also a great place to start. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just having a session this week with someone, and she said, the emotion of peeved came up. Okay, this is a great example, actually. And I said, hey, so the emotion of peeved is coming up from your subconscious, have you been irritated about something or have you even had a rash? And I thought she was gonna like fall out of her chair because she was like, I've had the weirdest rash. (laughs) And I'm like, that's irritation, that's peeved, let's get it cleared. So it like just trickles really quickly. So just observing your own body can Mm -hmm. also be a really great way to start noticing. Or people that deal with a lot of shoulder pain, Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, let's notice that. Why are you putting the weight of the world on your shoulders? Mm -hmm. What's that about for you? Mm -hmm. Like, do you think you could take that down a little bit? Like, what are you doing to take care of you if the whole weight of the world is on your shoulders? Mm -hmm. Now, other things will create physical pain in the body, and I get that. But you can usually pinpoint it down to something that was an emotional space first. Mm -hmm. So just being within yourself, noticing you, is if you're not ready to take the leap for a session, totally understand. And start observing how you're treating yourself. Mm -hmm. I would say that was one of the bigger things for me. Like, it's when like, I started, like, realizing... Because, I mean, I, you, you mentioned some of that stuff to me before, too. And I would, like, realize, like, how, how many of those limiting beliefs I would have or how mm. much I would say, like... I would just say things with such certainty that, like, didn't need to be <laughs> certain, you know? Mm-hmm. It was just like, well, this is just how it is. And it's like... Mm. This is certainly uncertain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty much... Yeah, that's very good. Chelsea, that was my last question for today. Do you have anything else you want to add? I just laughed at you and now I lost it. <laughs> so recently, as my practice has been building, mm-hmm. I've been bringing a lot of clients with a lot of complex histories. And um, something that's brilliant about the body code also could be, quote, unquote, unbelievable, right, is is the time frame that people actually mm, feel better. F- yes. And so what have you seen with that? Like, do you have people who it's like one session and they are – they're like, I don't feel that anymore. It's gone completely. Mm-hmm. Or like, it does it take more? Like, what's what's been your journey? Yeah, that's a fun one. Um, people ask, like, usually after their first session, well, okay, so what do I do now? And like, what do I expect? And I always use myself as the reference because that's the one that I know the best, mm-hmm. which is like, well, I've been doing this work for like 12 years. So it's my support. It's how I self-care. And then if I do need something I have that relationship already built and that buoy is there and I can get the support I need for myself if I need something. Mm -hmm. But yes, I have seen the one and done and I've seen some miraculous healing. Um, When I was going through training, there was this woman that I worked with and she came in on a walker because she just had a double hip replacement and visible pain in her body. Her body said, I actually do want to work on my heart wall. And she called it hers and because it was at the time. And 
we cleared that and it was and it was released and it was good and I'm thinking like I was in that training period where I'm like am I doing this right like this seems pretty straightforward because it was and this work usually is and she forgot the walker you guys <laughs> it was still leaning against the wall the hip pain was completely gone completely gone and her heart was reconnected so yes, the one and done thing is real, but you know, then there were additional sessions where there were other layers that benefited her to clear, but the pain physically toast gone. Wow. I think Bye. that's what the, the coolest thing about body code is, is you go into it with one intention. Yeah. You're like I want to get rid of and this. And then you see all the roots. Right. Well, or, mm-hmm. or you can see like, I actually like, didn't think that we'd be able to get rid of that. Or mm-hmm. I didn't think we'd be able to move on from that. And mm-hmm. now that we're talking, yeah. uh, actually, this is also <laughs> bothering me too, mm-hmm. you know? Right. And it's like, oh, wow. All of these things I just thought were my burden, my cross to bear mm-hmm. are things that I can like leave behind yeah. because it doesn't need to be part of me if I don't want it to be part of me, which I think is... So cool. Yeah. Um, I lied. I do have one more question because that story was awesome. Um, <laughs> is that your craziest story or what is your craziest? Oh my gosh. Like your single, like the thing when someone's like, tell me your craziest story. Like what is the one that pops in your head? So many of them I know. That, yeah. I know. Because your job is weird. <laughs> it's my job. And it's not my job. It's my passion. True. And it, that's what makes it so cool. <laughs> Um, the hip one is one of my all time favorites because I was going through training and I was like, I'll never forget this Mm -hmm. wild Mm -hmm. birth stories really are one of my favorites too, though. Birth journeys and those that are, I heard bird and I was like, I don't think we covered any birds yet. Yeah. Uh, Birth uh, with a TH at the end. I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Those ones are always beautiful. Just seeing that manifestation of what. Mm-hmm. was within now being our side. That would have been really cool if I knew you before we had our final baby. Mm. Yeah, that would have been cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much today. This was a, the the best ever. I'm yeah. just like so happy to <laughs> just be here and, and chat with you about this. Um, anybody who is listening who feels like, you know, some of this stuff might sound a little bit interesting, where can they, where could they find you to yeah. either – ask some questions or find mm-hmm. somebody in their area mm-hmm. or get on your schedule or whatever the case yeah. is. So you can find my work at a livingwelllife.com under the body code sessions mm-hmm. segment of that website. Um, like I said, I don't really have any other social media platforms. So the scheduling is all done through that one website. That's how you can reach me. Um, and then as far as the other practitioners, there's a practitioner map um, that is on discoverhealing.com if you'd really want that. But I would say because of 2020 and some of the other things, they, we really did all recognize how beneficial remote work is and mm-hmm. it's just as effective mm-hmm. um, and efficient and amazing and time saving really because you don't have to drive anywhere. Um, so you can find a practitioner on Discover Healing as well, or just connect with me or Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. Like we're here. Yes. Come hang. <laughs> well, thank you everybody for listening today. I hope this was enlightening to you about how um, extensive the whole system is in healing and how there can be a lot more beneath the surface than what we think there is. And that when we are able to get in touch with that, we really can clear it out and have really, really fulfilling, healthy, happy, joyous lives. Um, if you think this is for you, please feel free to reach out. We would love to get you connected with somebody who would be a great fit for you. Um, please share this with anybody who you know in your life that you're thinking of right now that you think, yep, this would be good for them too. Um, We just want to help our communities get happier, healthier, and joyous all around. And we hope everybody has a fantastic week. Thank you guys for being here and celebrating with us this moment of true coming circle, like full circle circle. within our journeys. It just has been wonderful. So cool. Yeah, thank Thank you. you. Thank you so much.